Let's take the problem 5 6 and we're going to multiply that by 1 half. What it means is we're going to start with the fraction 5 6. That's how much we start with. And we're going to chop it down by a half, which means we're going to chop this into two equal pieces and only take one of them. So we're going to cut it in half, basically. So if you wanted to see what this uh, represented, the 5 6 would be uh, represented as 1 6, 2 6, 3 6, 4 6, and 5 6. You can see that the 5 6 is basically almost a whole uh, pizza or almost a whole circle. There's only one little piece missing there. 5 out of 6 slices. And we're going to cut it in half. So that means we're going to be multiplying this fraction by whatever the second fraction is. In this case, it's 1 half. So this one half is telling you to consider a full circle and only have half of it. So what it's saying when we multiply these is we start with what we are given and we have to cut it into two equal uh, uh, slices and we only keep one of them. So it's like we're going to take this and we're going to slice it in half and only keep the top or the bottom portion. We're going to take what we have and cut it in half and only keep half of it there. That's what we're actually doing. Now to get the answer, what do we do? We multiply the numerator. 5 times 1 is 5, and 6 times 2 is what? 12. So somehow, after all of that uh, 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 stuff that we're going through here, we get an answer of 5 twelfths. What does 5 twelfths actually look like? We cannot simplify it any further, so we can just put 5 twelfths. There's 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths. So what we're saying is when we start with this amount, we cut it in half and throw the other half away and only keep one out of two pieces, what we end up with is this. Now let's see if this actually makes any sense. Let's just line it up here. You can see uh, two of these twelfths will fit into one of these original segments. And then there's the third twelfth, and then the fourth twelfth, and then the fifth twelfth. Let me get, see if I can get my fingers out of the way here. So you see what's happening is we start with everything in blue. We cut it in half here and we only keep the black area. That's why we get an answer of five twelfths. The, uh, fraction 5 twelfths is what fits exactly in place when we start with what we have here in blue and cut it in half and throw the other half away. Now for the rest of the problems, we are not going to use any magnets. We're just going to take the training wheels off and start to solve the problems. But we're doing the same thing every time. We're just cutting it down by whatever that second fraction is indicating. So for problem number two, let's consider the fraction 2 thirds. And we're going to multiply that or chop it down by 8 ninths. So we're going to start with this and we're going to cut it into nine equal pieces and keep eight of them. That means we're going to keep almost all of what we start with, but not quite all. Notice if it was nine out of nine, we would keep everything. Here we're keeping only eight ninths of what we have started with. So to get the answer, we multiply. Eight times two on the top is 16 and three times nine is what? 27 on the bottom. We cannot simplify this any further, so the fraction is 16 27 so much like before, if we put two thirds here and we put eight ninths here and we put 16 twenty sevenths here, what we would find out is if we started with this, cut it into nine equal pieces and only kept eight of them, whatever we had kept would be exactly equal to 16 twenty sevenths as a fraction. And that's what we're actually doing here. All right, next problem. Let's take a look at seven twelfths and we're going to multiply that by three fifths. How do we multiply fractions together? We multiply the numerator, 7 times 3, 21. Multiply the denominators, 12 times 5 is 60. So 21 sixtieths. Now you might think that you can't simplify this, but actually you can, 21 sixtieths. You can actually divide the top and bottom by what? We can divide this by 3, and we can also divide this by 3 because 21 divided by 3 is 7. 7 times 3 is 21. 60 divided by 3 is, of course, 20. 20 times 3 is 60. So we get an answer of 7 twentieths, and that's the final answer to that one. All right, 7 twentieths. All right, let's take a look at 5 thirds, and we'll multiply it by 8 thirds. Right? Now, I want to kind of indicate to you, or just kind of remind you, that here you're starting with a fraction, 5 thirds which is improper, which means you can turn this into a mixed number. It means this fraction is bigger than one, right? Whereas both of these fractions are smaller than one, this one is already bigger than one, and you're multiplying by something bigger than one. So you're starting with more than one whole pizza, and you're multiplying by something more than one. So you're not gonna really be cutting it down, you're gonna be making it bigger. And so the answer we expect to get here is something larger than one. Let's see what we get. Multiply the tops, five times eight is 40. 
multiply the bottoms. Three times three is nine. Notice we get a gigantic improper fraction. So we can circle this or we can simplify it further. We can divide, right? Nine times uh, four is 36. Nine times five is 45. That's too much. So it has to be nine times four is 36. It goes four whole times. 40 minus 36 is four, and it's of course out of ninth. So it's four and four ninths is exactly the same thing as 40 over nine. So you see, when you start with something much larger than one and multiply it by something much larger than one, you get four whole pizzas plus an extra fraction as an answer because instead of cutting it down, you actually started with what you had, which was bigger than one, and made it larger. And so that's why we get this mixed number that's bigger than one like this. All right, good. I want to point out what you're doing because I don't want you just to blindly solve things. I want you to know what you're doing. Take a look at eight ninths and multiply it by three fourths. Both of these fractions are uh, smaller than one. This is smaller than one. This is also smaller than one. So we multiply eight times three, 24, and on the bottom, nine times four, 36. So we have two even numbers and we can definitely simplify this. So we can take this 24 and this 36 and we can divide the top and bottom by what? What do we want to divide by? We could divide by two. You could probably think of lots of things to divide by, but you're going to have the fewest number of steps if you can divide by the largest thing that you can think of. Remember, we called it the greatest common factor. We divide by the greatest common factor, which in this case is going to be a 12. So we'll just divide by 12. We know we can divide this by 12. We know that we can divide this by 12. What do you get? 24 divided by 12 is 2. And 36 divided by 12 is three, two thirds. Now let's say, and that's the answer. Let's say just for giggles that we go back to this step, to 24, 36. Let's say you did not think that you could divide by 12 because you just didn't think of it. You think, well, I'm gonna divide this by two because I know they're both even numbers, all right? 24 divided by two is 12. And 36 divided by two is what? 18 when you divide that out. And you get 12 18ths, but then you realize these are also um, 12 18 is also, these are both even numbers. So we can take the 12 18 and we can divide again this by two. And what do we get? 12 divided by two is six and 18 divided by two is nine. But then you say, hey, I can, these are not even, but I can divide both of these by three because I can, these are both divisible by three. So I can take six, I can divide this by three and nine, I can divide this by three. What am I gonna get? Six divided by three is two, and nine divided by three is three. And you get exactly the same thing that we got in the previous step. So if you don't think of the best thing to divide by, to simplify, divide by two, divide by two, divide by three, you get to the same place. But if you think carefully and find the greatest common factor, the largest thing I can divide both by, then I just get it in one step and I have the answer. Sometimes I think of this and I'm very clever. Sometimes I'm not and it takes a few steps. It's okay, I don't care. Whatever path you choose is fine, long as you get to the correct answer. All right, problem number six. Let's take a look at two fifteenths. And we're gonna multiply that by five fourths. What do we do? Well, we multiply the numerators. Two times five is 10. Multiply the denominators. What is 15 times four? Not sure, so I'll go 15 times four. Five times four is 20. And one times four is four, five, six. So we have a 60 on the bottom. Can I simplify this? Yes, because I can divide 10 and 60 by the same number. What am I gonna divide by? I could divide by two, you know, because this is divisible by two and this is divisible by two, but I recognize that I can divide by a larger number, divide by 10. 10 divided by 10 is one, 60 divided by 10 is six. And I get an answer of one six. So I do it in one step. If I divide by two, then I would have to do it again and do a further steps, but I would get to the same place. All right, we only have two more problems. Take a look at five fourths, which is something larger than one because this is bigger than this. And we're gonna multiply by 11 eighths. Again, 11 is larger than eight. So this is something bigger than one multiplied by something bigger than one. So you're going to get something bigger than one. What will we get? Five times 11 is 55 and four times eight is 32. So this is fine if you wanna leave it as 55, 30 seconds, or we can, uh, we can uh, uh, go through the process of converting to improper. Now I can't do these in my head or converting to mixed number. I can't do these in my head too easily. So what I will do is I will take 55 and I'll just divide it by 32. I know that it can only go one time because 30 times two is 60. 
right? So 1 times 32 is 32. And I'll subtract. 5 minus 2 is 3, and 5 minus 3 is 2. So the remainder is 23. So it's uh, basically it's it's uh, 1 with a remainder of 23. So what does this mean when I'm converting to mixed number? When I divide this, it only goes one whole time with a leftover remainder of 23 out of the same denominator, which is 32. So 1 and 23, 30 seconds. So notice that when I take a fraction larger than 1, multiply by a fraction larger than 1, I get something larger than 1. 1 and 23, 30 seconds. All right. Last problem. Last problem. Let's take a look at the fraction 4 thirds uh, times 9 fourths. Now this is a fraction larger than 1, and this is a fraction also larger than 1 because they are both improper fractions. So we multiply. 4 times 9 is 36, and on the bottom 3 times 4 is 12. So you can leave it like this, uh, uh, 36 divided by 12, or we can try to convert. But when we try to convert, we realize that 36 divided by 12 is what? Exactly equal to 3, because 12 times 3 is 36. So in other words, if you take the 36 and you divide by 12, you realize it goes 3 times 36 with a remainder of 0. So it only goes 3 times. So the answer is 3. So when I take this fraction and multiply it by this fraction bigger than 1 and line up all the pieces of the pizza that I get when I do that, it comes and forms 3 complete pizzas. So there's no fractional left over there. So in this lesson we have conquered the concept of multiplying fractions. It's very important. We use it essentially constantly all throughout math and science. We also use it when we learn how to divide fractions, which, which is coming up very shortly. So for now, I'd like you to practice all of these. Make sure you're comfortable with multiplying fractions. Follow me on to the next lesson. We will continue building your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.